hey, uh, how much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? I'd say it's probably about that much. No, seriously. This is a stack of wood uh, of the different pieces of balsa and plywood and so forth. And these are the pieces that we are going to be turning into an airplane. A little bit of processing to do here, so let's get to it. Hey, welcome back to my shop. My name is Dan, and this is where I build, maintain, and sometimes repair model airplanes. Today we are working on getting the parts together so that we can build the Ryan's Rebel. It's a collection of sticks and other parts that need to be cut out. So right now I'm working on transferring the templates from the plans onto the pieces of wood so that we can run them through the saw and get them shaped correctly. One of the things I try to work on when I'm building a plan is trying not to destroy the plan because theoretically the way that this works is you take each one of the templates that's there and you're supposed to cut it out and include onto the wood or trace around it onto the wood and you know I don't like doing that. I like to be able to see if I can keep the plan intact just in case down the road I need to make a repair. I will have the templates exactly the way they were uh, from the set of plans like it was a brand new set of plans and I could simply uh, reset the part onto wood like if say I had to build a wing section or maybe part of the tail broke or something like that I would be able to go back and get all the parts I need just from the plans that I had because I didn't cut them all up and, and everything. Now I'm going to show you today a couple of different ways actually I think three different ways I'm going to talk about one but I'll show you the other two ways of how I transfer uh, the templates onto the wood that I'm going to be cutting out. Like I said, I don't like to destroy these plans by taking in... Uh, apparently what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to cut out this template and then you put it onto a piece of wood and trace it onto it or however you want to do it. Um, I don't like doing that because like I said before, I don't want to destroy these plans. I want to keep them intact just in case I have to use them again. Uh, one method that you could do that is non-destructive is you could take this plan down to the photocopy center and you could go ahead and um, have a copy made of it and then after that you could do several things. You could take the actual piece of wood. If you only need one like this, you could just go ahead and put like some rubber cement on the back of it and stick this right to the piece of wood and then go and cut it out exactly to the edges uh, doing that method. Or you could, um, let me see here, what else could you do? You could just go ahead and cut out the template itself, um, make a cardboard version of it, and then use that to trace, you know, you set the cardboard version right on top of the piece of wood as well. I don't like doing that because to me it just adds a lot more extra steps than uh, the methods that I like to use, which I will show you next. Okay, the cool thing about this plane is many of the templates are straight lined. So see this one here is all got straight lines on it and it's going to be put onto this quarter uh, quarter inch piece of plywood. So here's what we do. Here's what I like to do. That This is kind of a, a, a neat way of doing it. You do is you put the wood under the plan and then you check to make sure that all of the corners are onto the wood. And this is a good way to transfer this on so what we do is we take, this is an awl, uh, it's just simply a pointed awl, and what I do is I will take and put it in the corner and push it through. Now it is going to put a hole through the plan, but it will not destroy the plan. And I'll go ahead and do this one as well. Okay, and then this one. And then the last one's this one, down in the corner. Now, we can pull this out, and we can see that we've got all four of the corners right here are onto the wood. So now I can just take a pen, if I can find my straight edge, oh, there it is. And let's see. I'll go ahead and put that in the, there. Okay, now then with the pen, all I need to do is connect the corner points of the perfectly straight box.
And there we have it. We've got the exact uh, shape for the firewall ready to go here. I'll even put a little label on it so that later on it's not confusing as to what that is. Another way that you can transfer the template onto the wood is by using this. This is the uh, old, old time copy machine. That's right. Back in the days, I didn't even know you could find this, but luckily I went to the office place and it's very expensive now. It used to be a lot cheaper, but it's, it's uh, like 26 bucks for a hundred sheets. That used to be a lot cheaper, but the way it works is here's the wood. This needs to be done on one eighth inch balsa. We're going to do this one right here. And uh, you put the carbon paper down and we shove this underneath like so. And we make sure that the edge, there's the edge right there. I want to try to get up as close to that as I possibly can. And maybe even to the side edge as well. All right. So we got that. We'll go ahead now and uh, trace the entire former. I'm just going to use the pen to trace over the lines. Once again, this is non-destructive to the actual plan, which is great. And Oh, well, that was not good. That can happen. Okay. And then the last top edge. There we go. Now, one thing I wanted to point out is they do on this particular drawing show the grain. See how the grain goes like that? So in other words, the grain is going this way on this particular former. That's the way that we took the balsa. Here you can see there's the piece. Then you can see the grain of the balsa is also moving in the same direction as shown on the plan. So that one is ready to be uh, trimmed up on the uh, saw. This is a pretty common part on most of these models that we're building are the sticks. I don't like ordering sticks uh, from the balsa houses because uh, sometimes when you get them they're twisted or warped or sometimes they're broken and you have to glue them back together and I, I just don't like dealing with that kind of stuff so what I do is I make my own what I'll do is I'll buy a sheet like this um, the plans are calling for 3 8 by 1 quarter this is a 1 quarter inch thick piece of wood that was uh, once a four four inch sheet. It's a little shorter now because I've cut some sticks off of it. But uh, what I'll do is I will use this tool here. This is called a balsa stripper. It comes from a company named Master Airscrew. I'm not sure. I'm holding it upside down. I'm not sure if they still make these. Uh, but this is a basically it's a razor blade that's on the side of a square surface, and you can adjust the width of the the distance from the edge of the surface where the edge of the wood's going to start to the razor blade. You know, we use a uh, ruler like this, and I've got this right now set for 3 8 so You can adjust it just simply by turning this wheel right here on the side, and it'll widen out. So I've got it set for 3 8 right now. Let's go ahead and run it through a piece of wood here. I need one more of these sticks, and let me see if I could set this up so that you can see it. I'll go ahead and move like that, and like that. I wish, okay, I'll go ahead and run it right underneath. So the way it works is you sit it back here, like so. I'll go ahead and bring the camera over for a close-up, I guess. Okay, so it's like that. Here's the razor blade ready to cut. I'll go ahead and come back. And I'm just going to move through this piece of wood slowly making sure to keep pressure on here to force the uh, square part up against the wood so it makes it perfectly square on the cut too. Just moving on down.
Okay. And there it is. Now these are the three sticks that are going to be used as part of the uh, building of the tail parts. Um, all done and ready to go. This is a great way, I mean, especially, I think this is a lot more economical too. I can't remember what the price per stick was because I didn't even look this time. But I know that you will get a lot more sticks out of a plank than having them actually custom cut each one anyways. Hey, if you're new to this channel, and chances are you are, because I've only got five subscribers and one of them is my mom. But if this is the kind of thing that interests you, building model airplanes, then this is the place to be. Please feel free to subscribe and hit that bell down below. Every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. This is going to be a progression of different parts of building this plane, and you don't want to miss out. So, go ahead. Make my day. I'm so stupid. Yeah. <laughs>